as the credits fade, I just wanna thank you all so much for being here. We are really, really excited um, to have you here for this incredibly special edition of Women in Film Speaker Series. We are so excited to have you joining us here on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're watching, as we bring you Black Muslim women, media makers and industry changers. Joining us today are the incredibly talented Nigela Mumin, Muna Daria, Samira Lukman Harris, and Amina Bakir Abdul Jabbar, a powerful panel of creative and brilliant filmmakers to talk about the intersection of identity and craft, the business of authentic storytelling, and filmmaking as a force for culture change. I'm Ebony Adams, the manager of public programs here at Women in Film. I'd like to let you know that today's event would not have been possible without the partnership of the fantastic people at the Muslim Public Affairs Council. And I counted as one of the few highlights of 2020 that I got to know and befriend the wonderful Sue Abedi, the director of Impact's Hollywood Bureau this year. Since the Bureau was launched in 2011, Sue has blended her love of her faith with her love of film, te television and digital series to change and expand the narrative of Islam and Muslims in the entertainment industry. She is committed, fiercely committed, to expanding the pool of Muslim talent in Hollywood by nurturing and connecting them to those who can assist with their careers, both on the creative and business sides of the industry. Everyone, please welcome Sue Abedi, who will share some opening remarks before introducing our amazing, brilliant moderator, Professor Amina Bakir Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, note, our panelists will be taking your questions, so please post them throughout the conversation using the Q&A window at the bottom of your screen, your, excuse me, your Zoom screen. And now I turn it over to Sue. Thank you, Ebony, and right back at you. This, your friendship and, and collaboration has been the highlight of 2020. Um, it's been amazing. Thank you, Women in Film, the team of Women in Film and the City of West Hollywood's Arts and Cultural Affairs Commission. My name is Sue Obeidi and I am the director of the Hollywood Bureau at the Muslim Public Affairs Council, MPAC for short. MPAC changes the narrative of Muslims in the entertainment industry so that audiences see Muslims as vital contributors to creating social and cultural change in America and around the world. When speaking to industry decision makers and creatives, we're often asked what stories are missing on TV and film when it comes to the Muslim community. The answer is usually authentic Black Muslim narratives in general and narratives around Black Muslim women in particular. Black Muslims make up over 20% of the American Muslim population, and yet, unfortunately, these narratives are, have been marginalized within the Muslim community and in the entertainment industry. Audiences are hungry for justice, representation, and stories told through voices we all need to hear. And this is why we are so excited to be hosting today's panel. Malcolm X once said, the media is the most powerful entity on earth and it will have you hating the people being oppressed and loving the people doing the oppressing, making the innocent guilty and the guilty innocent. With that, and before I introduce Professor Amina, I want to implore all of you who are eligible to vote in the upcoming elections to do so as soon as possible. The America we deserve is counting on it. So let's get started. I'd like to introduce our moderator, Professor Amina Bakir Abdul-Jabbar. Professor Amina is an activist, a writer, a producer, a director, and a professor in the, in the Pan-African um, Pan -African Studies Department at Cal State LA. Professor Amina is currently in development on a TV series that is loosely based on her life. Please welcome Professor Amina Bakir Abdul-Jabbar. Thank you, Sue. I'm Thank excited. Peace and alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum to everybody out there and uh, peace to everyone. Um, I wanted to I want to first say thank you to the Muslim Public Affairs Council, Women in Film, which I've had, I have great respect for women in film, and the City of West Hollywood Public Affairs Council and the audience for joining us today. I'm excited to be here. We have a, a powerful group of Black Muslim women. This is the dream panel for me. This is something as a professor, I've tried to put up a couple of times at Cal State LA where I'm a professor. And so it's exciting to actually get this done right now on a in a pandemic uh, on Zoom. But I'm, I think the conversation today will transform and uh, transform and elevate you out of your uh, what's normal Zoom conversations. Um, first, I wanna introduce Samir Lukman Harris, who is an LA based screenwriter and playwright, as well as an actor. 
she can be seen in TV shows like Good Wife, HBO's uh, Room 104, and Sharp Objects. She also starred opposite Sterling K. Brown in Susan Laurie, Susan Laurie Park's Father Come Home from Wars. She is a writer as well, and her first full-length play, Rapture, is doing very well and garnering much recognition in notable festivals for, play, uh, for new plays. For instance, the Austin Film Festival, where it's doing, it did very well in the 2020 competition. She is a grad, also a graduate of the University of Wisconsin and Madison with a degree in cultural anthropology. So let's, I wanna welcome Samira Lukman Harris. Thank you so much. Awesome. Right. Thank you for having me. Next is Nigella Mukmeen, who is a writer filmmaker who hails from East Bay. She holds a degree. She holds a degree from Cal Arts in directing and writing. Her work is informed by poetry, photography, fiction, and dance. And you can see all of that influence in her beautiful debut, uh, feature film debut, Jen, where she won a special jury award for the screenplay by, from the South by Southwest Film Festival. She is, has written for TV shows like Swagger and the upcoming Blind Spotting, as well as directed episodes of Queen Sugar and Insecure. And she's currently developing her next feature film, Moosewoods Park. Um, welcome, Nigella Me. Nigella, are you from East Bay? Where are you from exactly? Oh, where are you from exactly? I'm from Brooklyn. Okay, okay, okay. I might have. Okay, I want to make sure I got that right. And then um, finally, Mona Daria. I might be saying your name wrong. So when you come on, you correct me and I will feel nothing about that. So, so I said, Oakland represent, that's a shout out to mm -hmm. you, Najla. So Mona Daria, who's a writer director and currently a candidate for a master's degree in film and television at Mount St. Mary's. She works as a Muslim consultant on season two of the Cor of Coroner and also co-hosted the 2019 North Hollywood Film Awards. When she is not writing or directing, she is workshopping her, um, her jokes on stage for an upcoming feature, which is loosely based on characters in her own family. So let's welcome M Mona Daria. Mona, am I saying your name right? It's Muna. 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 Yes. And how do I say the last name? <laughs> Daria. Daria, okay. I wanna get that. Part, you can't so much for having me. Thank you for coming. So usually the first question, we all know it well, is always like, how did you get started? What, how did you get into this? Um, industry. But I think what I want to ask, just to change it up a little bit, is, you know, what are some of the images that you saw of Black women or Muslims, or I'm sure you didn't see too many of Black uh, Muslims, but what are some of the images that you saw that maybe influenced you to start in this business? Or, or was it, is it Black, is it, what, what inspired you in terms of images or, you know, things you saw and you were like, I definitely want to work against that narrative. So we can start with Samira. I think probably, I mean, the image that first comes to mind about an image that was positive that I wanted, that allowed me to launch into acting and being creative was Malcolm X, obviously, because I'd never seen anyone like me being represented. Um, but I think when I finally became an actor, you know, I've never, um, not once in, in 20 years that I've been an actor, ever auditioned for a Muslim character. Um, so I, I know there's a lack there and that gives me fuel and drive to um, continue to make that representation um, on screen more apparent. Um, I'm just starting to dive into behind the scenes work. Um, but I think putting more faces out there is vital. I think Sue opened up from Impact with a quote from Malcolm X. And I think this is maybe another part to insert a quote from him. And we've heard it quite a bit in the last, you know, six months to a year, but the most disrespected um, Per, you know, person is, uh, the Malcolm X quote about the most disrespected person is a black woman. Um, so I don't know if that speaks to what you're talking about, but I think it, there's something about the way we saw, we think of ourselves as being black Muslims and black Muslims 
how we can work with that um, powerful quote, work against you know, the narrative of us, of black women in general. Nigella, how about you? Yeah, I would definitely say growing up, um, going to see Malcolm X in a, th in a movie theater at um, Grand Lake Theater in Oakland really um, impacted me. I had never um, seen people respond to a movie in that way. Um, it was just a packed theater, lots of Black people, lots of Black Muslims, and just the call and response that I witnessed from, you know, Denzel's performance and just the, the pride and the love um, toward that film and toward Malcolm X and toward that, you know, just the experience, I think, um, showed me that I wanted to have that type of impact on people through art. But at that time, when I was that age, I think I was maybe 10, I didn't know that I wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, I just knew that I wanted to impact people in that way um, and have people feel like they're being seen in a way. And I feel like that was one of the movies that helped me to feel seen. Um, I remember watching like Love and Basketball <laughs> it was a movie yeah. that helped me to yeah. feel seen just to see, you know, a black girl just living life, trying to figure out, you know, love and, and family issues. And there was a lot of stuff I watched that I didn't relate to, you know, where there yeah. there's going to be no internal life to black women and girls in TV and film. And I and I knew it was supposed to be speaking to me, but I, I didn't relate to it at all. So I think I found my voice really through writing and through reading novels and writing poetry as a way to just find myself um, artistically. You know, I saw that in your film, Jen, I noticed like what you said was missing from the film world or film and television world. I noticed we get to see the inside. Of, we get to see that in Jen. So what I mean by that is like, I think that's, you know, the advantage of having a black Muslim woman director on a project and writer is that we'll be able to show you that inside space, right? Is, do you, you understand what I'm saying? Like, is that, is that I think that would be something that I definitely see how your film Jen gives us the inside of right. that world. Yeah, I I'm always interested in like the interior world of people. And I think a lot of times it's just left out, you know, especially, you know, past films and TV we see when we have black women, the little bit of black Muslims we see, we just don't get to really go in depth into their mind as complex human beings. So just interested in that. Okay, we'll get back to that because I would, I would care, I would ask, I would follow up with why is that, right? And I think it, you, had, I was on a panel with you once before, and you had mentioned about how um, you were in a room, I think on a show or something, and there was a people just didn't know Muslims, right? They didn't know the Muslims character that they had, so you were there to build, beat, to beat that character up, right? To basically uh, shape that character. So that's another thing that I enjoy about your work. So. Muna, am I saying it right? Yes. I am so trying to get this right. Um, so what about for you? What were some of those, um, what was, what inspired you in terms of images? Um, when I was younger, um, I didn't really think that filmmaking was an option for me. I like, I, I initially thought that the kind of work I wanted to do was like to support or work with disenfranchised communities. And so I really, um, hadn't really thought of filmmaking as a possibility, but uh, when I, I definitely have been influenced by the kind of films that have already been spoken about. Um, when it comes to Malcolm X, it was really great to read his book and then to also read his autobiography and then to also see that film. And as a first generation, like African, um, I was born in Somalia, like I was really kind of looking for what it meant to be a black Muslim in this part of the world. Like it, it didn't really seem like I could look to my parents necessarily to um, um, explain what it meant to be uh, a Black Muslim in North America. So I certainly was looking for like images in the media, in film and TV to see um, what that could be like. I often was influenced by like films in the 90s, by like um, books that I've read. And so um, I think after some time, I decided that uh, filmmaking would definitely be a good thing for me to try out. So. No, so let me ask you a question because I was trying to figure this out about you through your bio because it wasn't in there on the one I had. So you're from, are you from Canada? Did you grow up in Canada? 
I did. I okay. grew up in Canada. Yeah. So you don't you don't have to say Malcolm X. Okay. So what? what no, really. I just okay. I know that I don't have to say Malcolm X. Um, okay. The the reality of growing up in Canada is that we're very much influenced by the United States. So. Okay. When we were younger, there was very little that we were taught in our schools about the African Canadian narrative. Um, and in fact, when I was doing research for my last, uh, uh, the last script that I was working on, I actually tried to find out information about um, African Americans who had lived in Canada and who had spent some time here. And so those were some of the earlier stories. But um, we were definitely influenced by American TV and American culture and black culture. And uh, it took quite a bit of time to figure out what like being African Canadian was because it certainly wasn't out in the world in the same type of way. So. And, that, and that's what I appreciate about having this panel with black Muslim women because I don't think people understand that we're a monolith. We're, we're not a monolith, right? That there are many different voices and how you are, will have to categorize yourself as um, black, right? But there's also this conversation about, you know, like, like the complexity and the, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely just, I definitely agree. Like when I think about what it means in terms of like our role in the diaspora or like what it, what my particular point of view or perspective is in terms of, uh, like my version of being a black Muslim, I, I definitely think that there is a lot of beauty in our diversity. Certainly. Someone just said a uh, proud Canadian here. So they just gave Canada a shout out. Uh, so Variety had a panel recently uh, uh, about women in Hollywood and it talked about fighting to tell the story or black women in Hollywood and fighting to tell those stories. So Rashida uh, Jones was on that panel and she mentioned, um, there's somebody else shouting out people to, okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted with that. But Rashida Jones mentioned that we need to work radically to change the narrative of black women in Hollywood. And I wanted to just kind of talk about that because they're saying this was a panel about fighting to tell those stories about black women, but I would, I would I'm would, i pitching this to the panel, but if we're fighting to tell stories about black women, I'm assuming we're probably at war about telling stories about black Muslim women. So do, does anybody want to talk about the, unique challenges of being uh, a creator or someone who is a black Muslim woman trying to get stories up probably about black women or, or maybe even black Muslim women. And what are some of those unique challenges uh, at this time? I'm trying to get those stories out. Uh, Samira, I know I you're- people, I think people, um, what I've encountered so far is that they just want you to stay in your lane or the lane that they've assigned for you. Um, they have really no interest in seeing the different shades that we come in. Um, and they have no interest in embracing um, stories that they've never encountered that I think an audience is incredibly hungry for. You know, I think our audience is quite starved. Um, to hear stories about them by them. Um, we don't really get that. And I think there's a lot of pushback um, when you don't fit the mold that they have set out for you. They say, you know, we will allow you into the door, maybe one at a time, one a year, one every few years, we'll let them through. But, you know, you have to fit a certain um, you have to check some boxes. And if you don't check those boxes, uh, they put up a lot of roadblocks for you because we're not just, we have so many things against us. We're not just women, we're black women. We're not just black women, we're Muslim black women. You know, right. like it's like the trifecta of things that people aren't talking about right now. Um, so I think that the barriers are, are really, they're, they're really sturdy um, and they really don't want you to come in. So you just have to kind of start launching grenades um, and say, you know, we're coming. Whether you want us or not, we're not going to stop creating. We're not going to stop creating community amongst ourselves. If you're not going to do it, we'll do it ourselves. Um, Samir, I want to follow up too to this question because 
like your name, when I look at it, it's a very Islamic sounding name in terms mm -hmm. of how it looks on the page. And I was looking at the different roles. First off, you're a great actress. Oh, thank uh, you. I was like, oh my God. Like, I did not recognize you in all the things. I was like, oh my God, she looks different in every one. I was like, what lady you think? So, um, but I wanted, and I wanted to ask you, like, do you find that maybe, you know, your name in some way, you've had some challenges? Or, I mean, I, I don't know if you even know if it's, well, you know. I've, I've only a few have people sort of given me feedback about it. I don't think most people um, mention it other than that they can't pronounce it. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I was in a play early in my career and they had changed directors and the director hadn't, after we had all been cast. And so the director hadn't met us or looked at our photos or anything because it was very quick. And she came in and she was quite startled that I was not an Indian woman. Mm. She, had, she had created in her mind a whole narrative of how she was going to do this. Well, she was just basically going to exoticize the Indianness of what she thought I was. And then when she found out I was black, she really had no idea what to do with that. So we, then we just wound up doing a, you know, much ado about nothing straight. And I, I got to play the character as written. Um, instead of having to jump through hoops or change who I am to be something. But that, I don't really, um, I haven't really had a lot of people directly tell me uh, anything about my name other than they think it's pretty. Okay. So that's good, actually. That's a nice thing. One less thing to have to contend with. Okay. Um, Nigel, do you want to say something or anybody else? Um, yeah, I think, you know, just echoing what um, Samira is talking about, um, one of the reasons that we made Jen completely independently was because of those barriers, was because mm -hmm. we knew how hard it would be to push through a film about a Black Muslim girl navigating identity, sexuality in a way that just wasn't the Hollywood, it's not a white gaze, it's not a Hollywood lens, it's it's really speaking to black girls, black women, black Muslim women, black people. And <laughs> we just knew that that there was no, you know, kind of template there for us to fit into. And so even when we were pitching the film to investors, um, you know, people were just kind of taken aback because they hadn't really come across a story like that ever. Um, and there weren't a lot of kind of contemporary examples that they could pull from. So you just had a lot of people who just because of that wouldn't give the, the film or story a chance to live because mm -hmm. they just don't have something that made over a million dollars that's comparable to what we're trying to do. So I think for me, I just knew that I could tell the story completely um, in the way that I wanted to tell it by um, making an independent film and having control over the narrative rather than trying to go through, we, you know, we did try some kind of like more formal studio routes that didn't work out, but I just knew that ultimately it would be an independent story um, just because there, there was not a lot of foundation there for us to pull from, for people to get behind it in the way that we wanted, we would want them to. Okay, somebody asked the question, how was Jen distributed? Jen was distributed. Um, we uh, premiered at South by South, um, South by Southwest and um, Orion, Orion Classics um, picked up the film from there. Um, and then it went, it, it, just honestly, it wasn't a, a good distribution deal at all. Uh, we were given no marketing. We were just, no one, a lot of people didn't even know our film came out. We did all word of mouth and through good press, we got people to pay attention, but um, it was in some theaters and it's now on Amazon Prime and that's where the majority of people watch it is on um, online. But I just think, I think we're getting to a better place now where where our stories are given the, the distribution and the marketing they deserve. But at that time and juncture, we just weren't really given a chance to um, have a good distribution deal. So that's, well, I want to I want to say I want to say something to you about uh, that I enjoyed about watching your process. You're very open. Like you're also um, a film. I don't know film critic, like you write reviews about films, but you're also very transparent in your process. So there was a way that 
I, as a filmmaker myself, coming out with a film too, um, could, could see your process. You were you would be open about different things like the GoFundMe, the the. I remember reading something you were talking about what you just said about the um, industry kind of rejecting that narrative about Black Muslim women, um, and I, so it was just interesting to see like, and I think to your credit and, and a congratulations on like the documentation of Black Muslim woman gaze, right? But also Black Muslim woman uh, filmmaking process, right? So to your credit, so thank you for that. Thank uh, and you. I think it'll be helpful for other Black Muslim women coming up. So Mona, you know the drill, I'm coming to you. <laughs> if you have a question, if you have an answer. Um, so like, it, do you have something you wanna add to that, to that, to what we were talking about? What was the question again? So mainly I'm just talking about the war to make Black Muslim women stories. And I know you have a film, I think, and I might be getting it wrong, called Black Gold Muslima. Yes, that's that, correct. That's I saw the trailer for it. And what I saw was you pitching, is, is it existential? Um, yeah, it's about a young um, Muslim woman who's a comedian and who's trying to figure out how to balance her identities. And uh, the reason that I wanted to work on that project specifically is, um, when I was in film school, my professor said to try to work on the project that scares you the most. Mm. And one of the things that worried me the most was specifically about representation. So I wanted mm. to figure out how to balance what it means to, to be my, the identities of being a Black woman, a Black Muslim woman, uh, an immigrant. And, um, and I wanted to do them in a way that was authentic and honest, but also um, in a way that was authentic and awesome. So I didn't necessarily, but also uh, respected my faith and also respected the variations of faith. And so mm -hmm. I created a character that went on a journey and try to kind of like, I let the character try to answer that question for me. And I learned quite a bit like through writing um, that script um, about just even in terms of some of the feedback, um, some of the suggestions that people made were was for me to like change some of the names to make it simpler so that like, um, so that it could be easily understood by a larger audience. So like, as I was going through some of the development on that script, uh, some of the feedback that people gave uh, or that they expected her to be in a hijab and it's important to have black Muslim women who are not in a hijab and to find out what their stories are. Um, and so I certainly think that there's lots of challenges when it comes to like representation. And for me, when I think about my audience, which is like black, people, Black Muslim women in specific, uh, one of the concerns that I have is to try to, con to create work that is that speaks to that audience and that can capture the variations of um, the way that people practice their faith. So that it, so that like, so one of the characters is an aunt who's like a model and she doesn't really, um, it does, she doesn't wear hijab and she didn't practice when she was younger. And so I try to just show that being Muslim isn't one very specific way. And I think that in the stories that we tell, that's what we're trying to do. I think that people are expecting a very specific look when they think of a Muslim person. And Black Muslim mm. narratives, uh, there aren't, we need more of them so that we can start to understand that, that there's so many different ways to be uh, Black and Muslim in this world. It's, it's kind of ridiculous though, when you think about it, because like we've been around like, like the statistical data on Black Muslims in general, like from the very beginning in terms of, we, some people already know this, that Black Muslims were here when, you know, even before uh, the conversation with the Nation of Islam, but also with um, Black Muslim slaves, right? But I have a question about something that, that I didn't, that I heard you say, that people wanted you to shorten the names. Like some of the feedback was that people wanted like simpler names or like like so you're kind of get you're trying to get feedback from like um, executives or like people who might be able to like uh, like while I was pitching my project one of the suggestions was to simplify the name so that they would be easier for an audience or easier for like um, people so of course I didn't do that but like that's something okay. <laughs> no I did not simplify the name. <laughs> okay. But I'm just saying that's like those, like as you're trying to do this work of like just thinking of your audience and just thinking of honoring like, these women, you have to also take into consideration all of these other voices 
that are not aligned with what you're doing and who have the power to make your projects happen. So. Right. So, so maybe I, cause I, that's not a question here, but I do want to kind of open that up, which is the conversation about like the notes, right? So the notes on that you're getting from executives possibly about your content that isn't, you know, because when we talk about like, who is this content for, right? You said first it was for black people, right? And, or maybe you said black Muslims, but it's interesting to hear that because it sounds like what we, I think we talked about the white male gaze, right? But really who are we shortening that for? Like Amber Ruffin did a really great bit about that recently on her show about black women's names and like how some white people have a hard time saying those names. So, you know, I guess I'm opening that if, if anybody wants to add, but when we talk about audience, like are we, the idea of having to basically de-Muslim your project and maybe even de-Black your project to get it made, that, that is very, um, anybody wanna to add to that? Like, where do we draw the line? I think it's, for me, I think uh, just in my experience so far with writing, in the script that I've written after, uh, it's about a black Muslim American woman who is redefining her identity after a series of tragedies. And I included some, you know, Arabic words and things like that. And feedback was, you know, you should write this in the translation. Um, so people know what, what you're saying, what, what this means. And I, you know, I'm, okay with some of it and some of it I didn't change because I think there's an in instinct that will Google it. <laughs> right. You know, if you don't, if you don't know it, you would, I mean, any word that you don't understand in a script, you're not going to understand every single word. People use, you know, words from the 1800s. You don't know what they're saying all the time. So you Google it and you look it up. Why do, do you have to not do any work? Um, do I have to really make it that easy for you? And I've also heard things because I didn't make her a saint. Um, she's very prickly and I've definitely had pushback about that. I think um, that's unacceptable, <laughs> uh, especially because she's a black Muslim woman. So they want her to be very palatable. Um, and she's, she's not because she's going through stuff. And I think, you know, right now we're seeing a bit more with like, Rami and Mahershala, who's out there doing amazing work, and they're allowed to sort of be anti-heroes sometimes, you know. Um, and so I, I would like to see some, some women and some Black Muslim women just being real mm. about their experience. And so I, you know, with that one, I, I did not take those notes because I, I wanted to lean into that. I think there's a purpose for for that and there's a time for that. Um, I don't think we always have to be nice. Okay, Spe well, yeah, was, women are expected to be nice, right? Yeah. And our yeah. characters are expected to be nice and we're expected mm -hmm. to, to uh, wait and just be waiting for men. Somebody put in the chat, we're Muslim, do we have the Muslim splain, right? Yes. <laughs> Muslim splain. Um, Indeed. Uh, yeah. Nigel, did you want to add anything? Jen is great at that. Jen is yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm just writing real people here. I don't, when I write Muslims, I don't say, oh, I'm gonna write this type of person. I'm, I'm writing a complete person, flawed, complex, intelligent, beautiful, makes mistakes. Like all the elements are there. I do not, I do not believe in types. I don't believe in. Mm the good saint, the bad, per I believe we are just people. And that all of my work is like that, Muslim characters, not Muslim characters. And I think that's what made Jen, it, it really, a lot of people just love it and relate to it. Cause they're yeah. like, man, finally we can just see some, some, some black women, some black Muslims just being people. Um, and it's, it's refreshing. I think it's just refreshing to see someone reflected on screen that is like you who's, just figuring, figuring it out. Um, and so when I was writing Jen, I didn't have, like I said, we made it independently. So I did not have execs who were telling me, you know, you need to do this or that. 
And that was a, a an asset that was something that was beneficial for my process to not have people over me telling me how to do things. Um, but on the flip side, it's like it's independent. So we don't have a lot of money. So we're going to have to really, really like try to make this work shooting this film in 18 days for, you know, a very small amount of money. And so that's the kind of things you have to juggle. It's like you want to have the control and that authorship and that authorship but you have to see, oh, wow, I don't have a lot of money and I'm going to have to really figure this out. And for me, I wanted, I will take that chance if I get to tell my story in the way I want to tell it um, and not be, you know, have things, you know, being messed with and, you know, people wanting me to change it in a way that doesn't fit the, the, the image and the audience that I'm, I'm serving. So that was really how I, I negotiated that. I want to follow up real quick and I'm get to the questions. There's questions, lots of questions. So that's good to, that people are excited to talk. Um, I just wanted to lift up the summer character. I don't, you know, and her play, her, um, you know, the way I, the summer character and her mother and the whole conversation of conversion, right? So we don't see that. So it's just assume that we're, we're Muslim born, right? Or not, right? That's the thing I would have answered was like, when, when you say, when I say Muslim, everybody in the audience at home, they probably don't see any of us, right? Right? Muslim doesn't typically, film and television doesn't represent Muslim as black Muslim women, right? But the summer character and her mother and the conversion to Islam, I think that that story, that idea of the conversion is, is um, I, I really appreciated having someone tell that story. Um, so just anyway, just lifting up that you, you do that um, or you did that. So what did you want? Oh, yeah, just, you know, I think it was important to show how people enter into, into a religion, into a spirituality. Both my parents were not Muslim at one time. And so I really had to do honor and honor that journey that people go through um, in terms of conversion and reversion to Islam. Which is a different experience than mine, right? I'm born Muslim. So for me, it's like, I enjoy seeing someone take the handle of the conversion. That was good, really um, powerful. I just, okay, so just another question here and then we'll get to audience questions really quick. So I think I, I saw some of you liked uh, Sue's post on Facebook about the Dave Chappelle um, Netflix interview that he did where he lit up where he talked about how Islam like brings some comfort and influences him. Do you all, do, if anybody feels comfortable, you can pass on this question, but do, uh, does being Muslim, how does your faith shape you as an artist or um, bring you comfort how, how, and or bring you comfort? How does that, you know, play into the way you create or does, do you think about being a Muslim or do you think about any of this when you, Anybody want to take that? There's a quote that I saw Maharsha Ali share, which is like, oh, Allah guide us to our excellence or oh, Allah guide me to my excellence. And it's like something that I think of often or I try to affirm because um, I think in the end, like we do the best we can and then the rest is up to Allah. Mm -hmm. Most of the work that I do, I try to think about I think I just try to think about having people who look like me or like people that I grew up with or people that I know be represented. And most of the time that means that they're Muslim and like um, they're like interesting and they've got like layers. And so I just want to make sure that they are included. But most certainly um, I think about Islam quite a bit. Like my journey went from like wearing a hijab and being like super uh like very religious in that way to like not wearing a hijab. And so I've had my own kind of journey. And, and so I want to make sure that, um, yeah, so that's about it, sorry. So as other people answer, do you want to talk about maybe, that's a great response. How does, how does micro, how do you deal, does your faith help you deal with the microaggressions against Muslims, you know? Because obviously there's a lot of some Islamophobia, but uh, you know, does, does the faith help you? Or do, do you think about that when you're creating? Is there a way that you find solace in it? I think for me, it it leads me to believe that there's a certainty that like what, whatever Allah intends for me will happen. And that all I can do is try to 
create the best work and to have the best possible interactions with people. And since I know that in the end, it's in up to Allah, I think that really gives me the resilience to continue on. Like I've been working on one film for like six years and I'm very much closer to where I want it to be. But uh, like knowing that like my intention is to illuminate Muslims and to illuminate stories and that um, like whatever Allah intends will happen most certainly gives me the resilience to keep going regardless of what happens. Okay, that's a great response. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted because somebody's texting a question about brainstorming ideas. Um, anybody else want to respond or we'll go to other questions? Um, I, for me, I don't always write Muslim characters in everything that I write, but I do find I tend to sprinkle Islam in even if it's not specifically a Muslim character, just because I think it's something you can't divorce yourself from. It's just in you. Um, and so it just, it comes out in the writing. But I, I think because we do live in an Islamophobic world, it has been tricky when I have written Muslim characters of trying to stop myself from um, pleasing every single Muslim who might have put their eyes on this thing um, because it's scary to say something that within our community might be something that we know, but it's, you don't want to say anything negative because you don't want someone to take that as fact and run with it and take it out of context of what you're saying. So it, it's, it's been a internal sort of struggle for me to just say, well, this is my, my story that I want to tell right now. It might be a different, character who comes to me in, in a couple of years who wants to say something different. But right now, um, I think there are things that in the community, there is anti-Black racism um, that you do find sometimes. There is some, you know, not everything is a utopia as well. And so I, it's just hard to navigate like what to say, what not to say. Samir, I'm sorry to cut you off. You're talking about in the Muslim community. In the Muslim community and also, you know, because you want you want other people to watch this who aren't Muslim. You know, you want a wide audience. You're, you're telling something specific so that it can be universal. And um, sometimes I've been in things where, you know, there has been some Islamophobia in the writing and people have taken that as fact. And it's been very difficult for me to then be in that project because I'm like, but that's not true. <laughs> that's not <laughs> my experience of this thing, but maybe it's somebody else's experience, you know? So you, you, you're kind of like, do you censor yourself or not? And I've decided not to censor myself, um, but it's scary to do that. Um, that's, I, want, I want to put you on the spot because I want to talk about so picking back off of Samira's conversation. So she's talking about, I don't know if I'm lifting up the wrong thing, but are you talking about like writing an imperfect character as a Muslim woman and the responsibility almost to present possibly perfection, feeling like you have to represent a certain, you have to maybe show a character that may or may not be authentic because you're feeling pressure. Um, so. Now, do you, do you, is there something you want to talk about with that in terms of like your summer character or just in general, like you said something earlier about how you don't, you just think about your characters as people, you're not like approaching it. Yeah, I just, I go very, I'm a writer and director who's very deep into character. Um, I do, I go so deep into characters. I really get into their head and their mind and their world. And I think the more deep you go into character and character development um, and, and going to the hum the humanity of, of people, then the, the more that character won't come off as like a bad person or a negative stereotype or, you know, tarnishing the community because the, the humanity, and I think that's a big thing with Islam, is just like humanity and love mm -hmm. and, peace uh -huh. and these things coming through. So when I made Jen, I made sure that all of those elements came through, that 
their struggle, but there's so much love and there's so much color in life in this experience that Summer is going through and she feels it too. Right. And so I just, I thought it was, it, it would be a disservice to her, to the character, to me, to the community to hold back on the truth of what people go through, of what teenagers go through, of what, you know, black women go through um, in in life. And so for me, like, I, I did have points where I was, I was like, wow, I, I don't know, like, when it was first screening, doing screenings, I was, I would get a little scared, because I, especially <laughs> when I went home to Oakland, I did a big Oakland screening, and I was like, my dad's in the audience, my whole masjid is in the audience, and I just, I had to have them love it, you know, if someone didn't <laughs> like it, I was like, I might just but they left it and I didn't get any you know like there was no I really didn't get really that much pushback on on the film not at all um and I just think it's because people see it's coming from a place of love and it's every character is a complex person there, there are some characters who do things they make a mistake or they do something that maybe is not the right thing but there's a full circle moment where maybe they realize they shouldn't have done it. So I'm not just here to just put these types in here and just, oh, this is the bad guy. This is the pious woman. Like these are full realized people. And I think the more I can do that, I do that with every project, then the better, I, you know, people won't just get you know angry or think oh this is just you know being a bad representation for for muslims so that's what i just try to do <laughs> right so so the, so because we think about hollywood's image of muslims is basically um usually flawed and typically had been us muslims as terrorists and typically omitted um black women black muslim women right so there's a way that you, there's a responsibility but the responsibility, I think, at this point is really to to yourself as the creator. Make I don't know if that the creator of the content to be authentic. Yeah, it's like I just knew I couldn't. Because when you make a film, it's it's there for life, and it's like it's gonna be with you for life. So I'm like, I know I can't live my life having my first feature not be what I what is true to me and true to what I know of the community I come from and people that I know and the world so I just I just had to do that and I took it's a risk art is a risk you never know how it's gonna what people will say but you know with Jen I, I'm so grateful to God that people really you know found a found their self in it in some way so great so, okay, there are a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, some I've already asked. Somebody wanted to know about exercises that you do as a writer or I must, maybe you do some as a director for creating content, like some of your pro tips on how you create. Anybody want to take that? Nobody wants to take that question. That's from the audience. I didn't create that question. So y'all gotta. <laughs> nobody. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me think. So nobody has a process. What's your process? I mean, I know I could pretty much say most of your themes from what I saw, but is, is there a process to your creating your theme? Are you like for me, I have to, if I get stuck, I have to travel. Like if I get stuck, I have to go outside of, like I live in Inglewood, so I gotta go somewhere with, and just, you know, I like to eavesdrop on conversations. Um, Mona, I know you are a comedian. So some of your process you already said is you go on stage, right? Yeah, yeah. you workshop jokes. Yeah, I workshopped like um, the people, like the dialogue was good, but I needed to work on the jokes. So I did stand up and mm. so really good way for me to try to figure out comedic timing um and it was also a really wonderful way to get to understand the world of comedy um in a way that makes it makes the script richer so i definitely do that I'll, I'll go for walks i listen to audiobooks that are connected to like um things that are interesting to me or meaningful um i'll speak to my grandmother um and who always has a bunch of stories um I'll, I'll listen to lots of people. I'll also, uh, I watch old films. Um, 
and like films from Somalia, like uh, old kind of like riots and stories. Um, and I actually look a lot towards African storytelling as well. Like I'm interested in like um, stories in the diaspora um, and stories in Africa and like uh, what our mythology is and um, the rhythm of storytelling. And so I try to look, I, I try to watch all those things, listen to a bunch of different things. And I know that they find their way in the work in the end. I can't wait to see it. I can't <laughs> wait to see that film. Thank you. The mayor, how about you? Because I know you do theater. I know that's, I've directed one play and I know it's a, it's probably to me, theater may be harder than film directing. I uh, see it's just for you. It's completely, I think the process of acting is the same, um, mm -hmm. but I think theater is, is, they're very different disciplines. You have to be worried about very different things, but artistically, you know, I'll listen to music. I just wanna open up my imagination as much as possible um, when I'm creating a character. Um, I need to get the lines in as soon as possible. Um, I find that whenever I'm stuck on a line, it usually means I don't know this person yet. Mm, um, and so, you know, when I'm going through the lines, I, I start to ingest their history and their story a little bit deeper and deeper each time I go through them. Um, so I read the script a lot. Um, I, and then I do just, you know, artsy exercises. Um, like what? Um, I do like Suzuki. <laughs> um, and because I, I find that like doing something really physical um, and it's, it's kind of a jarring uh, type of exercise, um, it, you don't have time to think. Mm. And when I don't have time to think, it really sort of frees me up. And then a lot of creative impulses start coming in to my head. Um, writing is a little different though. Um, I, I, right now I'm trying to juggle being an actor and now doing, being a writer. Um, that's a little tricky because acting is definitely my priority, um, but I really enjoy writing. So I, I can't do both at the same time I'm finding. Um, so if there are moments where I'm acting, I can only act, I can't do any writing. And then when it, I have downtime from acting, that's when I can, full, I think because I invest fully in the creative process of either one that I, I can't sort of divide my attention that way just yet. Um, I'd love to figure out a system for that, but right now I, I can't. And for writing, uh, most of my stuff comes to me in dreams. Mm. Um, so I, I try to be, you know, really open and, and pay attention and have my phone next to my bed at all times so I can jot down the notes. And then, um, you know, a couple months later, I'll start to um, put some connective tissue between the scenes that have come to me and um, and then all of a sudden I'll have something that I like that's starting to take shape. Very good. Um, now, I wanna ask you about your directing process. You mentioned about your writing process. I saw one of your, a little bit of a short you did that was a mermaid, like a, I think a black mermaid in there, or was I? Yes, yes, that was my thesis film. So I wanna, can you talk maybe about your directing process? Cause I noticed the bean pie uh, close-ups, the very detail, very much showing us aesthetic, Black Muslim uh, aesthetic. What some of your directing process, I know you did Insecure, directed Insecure and Queen Sugar, but what is your, how do you approach, because it's one of the questions, how do you approach, um, what's your process? Yeah, my directing process is really a lot of it is tied to my writing. So a mm -hmm. lot of the detail, especially in Jen, like that's all in the script and also I'm a poet I write poetry I've been you know doing creative writing and poetry since I was a young um, girl and 
a lot of the source material for Jen for that script came from poems that I wrote about my own life and about, you know, being a Black Muslim girl and everything that I was going through was then channeled into Summer and into this script that became Jen. So I really have just like a really close relationship to the text and to kind of trying to honor that, um, especially, you know, scripts that I write. But it's also a lot about world building, like what world am I trying to build and, and what are the details and the images and the visual design that is going to help me to convey that world. And that is with my films, but also when I enter a TV, um, a TV show, they have a whole world set up already. And so it's about how am I going to add uh, my voice to this world? Um, how am I going to create a world? So it's a lot about the writing. It's about, you know, um, I always, I'm really into like scene studies. So it's a lot about going scene by scene and really knowing what scenes are about, like what I'm trying to say, what characters want. This is like theater stuff, but I went to Cal Arts where theater was like a big plat like foundation of their curriculum for directing. So we did a lot of scene study. And so a lot of, I, I really don't like to go into directing scenes or anything without fully like marking up the scene to know exactly what is it about, what the characters want, like what's the conflict, like just, just rudimentary stuff, but it, it really helps me to know that so I can fully invest in the actors and give them like everything they need um, to be successful in their character. So I just feel like I do the work. I will do all the work to fully kind of get into the world of the character, into the world of the film, into the scene, um, and then get on set and be able to perform. But it's a lot of like, you know, before getting on set, doing the work to, you know, have the answers for everybody. Okay, very good. I'm going to go to these questions. I'm actually going to have to open them. I see. Okay, someone asked, I'd be interested to hear whether the panelists think there are greater opportunities for Black Muslim women in film or television. Does one medium seem more welcoming than the other for Black Muslim stories? <laughs> Anybody want to take that? Like I there? think I can just say just for my, I'm actually right now on a TV shoot. I'm direct. I'm going to be directing an episode that I wrote for an Apple show, but I found the TV space. I'm not, I think for just as a black Muslim woman and working, like getting employment, I have found the TV space to be somewhere where I can have a life and, and kind of um, make money and live and survive um, as opposed to the film space. Um, it can be hard to make a living just, you know, making films. Like there's people who do it, but I think that it, it, it can, it, you know, in the beginning it's hard. So I, I would say the TV spaces, there's a lot of, there's, you know, more and more opportunities for women, uh, black women, black Muslim women to, get in there, direct, write. Um, I see that in my experience. I mean, and can we also, since we're a couple of days away from the election and we're also in the middle of a pandemic, I think we would be remiss if we didn't mention that this, maybe some of those opportunities have come from the response to the prior, or to the administration and the cracking of skulls with BLM, right? Like this is an interesting time. We should talk about that, right? Like there's a new, does, does anybody think that the BLM's, you know, response and, um, you know, the pandemic has kind of made, cause it's, it's, this is definitely a different time for my experience. It's, I see a lot more opportunities and I would agree uh, with the television conversation. I think features in general right now are just hard, it's hard to get up, right? The whole industry right now is pretty much, you know, kind of frozen, right? But then there's a few things getting out, but yeah. anybody else want to add to that? That the zeitgeist, what's happening in the zeitgeist, what's going on has helped or maybe hurt your stories. I mean, we have a president right now who literally put a Muslim ban 
up when he first within what 90 days of or I don't know within a few months of being elected. Yeah. Do you think that these stories, the, the response to getting even this panel, like the idea that we're having a whole panel with just black Muslim women? I don't know. Does anybody feel like the times have helped or hurt their career? I think that the racial pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement have certainly allowed people to uh, it's like it's provided a lot more exposure and people are definitely interested and in wanting to hear from black Muslims like I think that um, like is often done um, in North America uh, there's always there's challenges in black communities and many communities benefit as a result of like the resiliency and work that's being done and so I think most definitely uh, there are opportunities and I think it's a it's a great time to be I think that it's a great time to be able to try to tell stories yeah and well, we and we know that that BLM movement was founded by Black women, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, sorry, and just on the TV question, I wanted to say too that I worked when I worked as a Muslim co um, consultant on Corner, uh, the TV show season two, mm -hmm. which is going to be on CW. I specifically was helped able to help craft um, or support the creation of a Black Muslim character named Noor. And so in that case, they like um, the creators of the TV show invited me, um, called me into the writer's room and asked me questions about how to make that character feel specific to a culture. And um, and I think that more and more so people are starting to recognize that um, you have to include if you want to create a black Muslim character, you've got to include black Muslims and speak to them and I'd ask them for advice to make sure that it's authentic. So. Um, I thought that was a really great experience and I, it was also uh, a very good storyline. So I just wanted to add that in terms of the TV. Very good. And I would like to add that, yeah, I had the same experience on a TV show that I wrote for, the one I'm here directing. Um, there, I had an opportunity to help create a Black Muslim character in the show. Um, and just, it was, it was a great experience to be able to be in the room and have that type of input and nobody really tried to challenge me, but I think that also came from people's just lack of awareness or they just didn't really know a lot about Islam or Muslims. So they kind of, a lot of times would look at me as like the expert, which I didn't like sometimes. Oh. I don't like people, you know, I'm not the expert, you know, I don't think I'm an expert on, on Islam. And so I just, it was, it was a good experience, but sometimes it was a little overwhelming to be oh. that person who always had to speak for, you know, a community. Well, I, I, we won't tell anybody you're not the expert. We'll keep it our secret. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I just feel like it's it, it comes to a point where it's like, these are people too, right? This is a person too. So it's like, you know, certain questions I, I didn't understand, you know, why they're asking that. That's the burden, right? The, the Black Muslim burden in some way. Um, okay, so I think we, there was another question I saw. Okay, there was another question I saw about um, any projects that you all are excited about working on in the future um, that you want to lift up at this point. Assuming that Hollywood doesn't uh, do what it's done in the past and like exploit and then move on, um, are there projects that you want to at this time discuss? That you're excited about. That was one of the questions on audience questions. Any future projects? Or is everything a secret? <laughs> They're all see, I know everything's always a secret. Like you can't tell this. Anybody? Uh, I I'm, I'm I'm working, I have a new podcast called Young East African Girl. Um, and I'm also uh, worked on a book proposal for a, a, a collection of essays um, about um, the connections between like the connections or kinship between um, uh, Pan-African communities and it's called You Are My Other Self. So those are two projects that I'm working on. And I'm also uh, have my feature film. And say the name of your future feature film uh, and your, go ahead. Black Gold Muslima. Okay. Yeah. 
So Black Gold Muslim, I actually, I, I st because of the pandemic, I, I wanted to, I started to work on the collection of essays because I wanted to find out like how I can contribute or like what stories I can tell. And so it felt like a way for me to feel like I was actively creating something that could be useful and also working out my feelings around like the time that we're all existing in. Love it. And you can now use the word Muslima, just so you know, I made a film called Muslima's Guide to Marriage. <laughs> and I think I've officially, I didn't create the word, of course, but yes. I was telling you, don't let anybody shorten it to- No, I wouldn't. To moo or mo. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. I have like six Muslim names, so we're good. Okay, anybody else want to talk about future projects? I know, Najla, you mentioned you're directing. I think that's the project with, is Reggie on the EP of that? Reggie Bythewood? Yes, yes. Swagger uh, is the show uh, that's going to be coming out on Apple. We're currently in production and I'm about to go in production on my episode um, in about a week. I'm in prep right now. So, you know, look out for that. And then I have um, some films in development right now. I do have one film um, that is entitled Noor. Uh, for the main character's name and it's a love story I've been developing that since 2010 and yeah it's a high stakes love story set in in Crown Heights Brooklyn love and it. something that you know I I'd never seen before on screen so I'm really excited to um, get that out into the world one day great Samira I know you don't do um, the internet I know you don't do social media this, I'm just messing with I, you. I do it sometimes and I don't do it. It's, <laughs> I have an off and on relationship uh, with it. No, but any projects you want to mention or anything you want to lift up? Um, right now I'm just working on a couple of pilots. My brother and I are adapting um, his novel, One Blood, um, into a pilot. And then I have another one that I'm doing on my own. Um, I wrote a children's book recently that just kind of came out of nowhere <laughs> um, wow. uh, that I also kind of am, am looking at uh, possibly making it into a series. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. So if there's no, nothing else to say, I will just say thank you all for being here. I know that there are gonna, be, maybe some other people are gonna come on, but I wanna say thank you for this conversation. This is like a dream come true to have my Muslimas here, um, letting people know, because I know when I get in the room, people are always like, oh, you're the only one, <laughs> right? And then it's like, no, there'll be others, right? Um, so I'm excited that we had this conversation, but I'm excited to see you. And even though, you know, most of you are, um, it sounds like everybody's doing very well, but just know that, you know, I guess we lean into our faith that things will continue to go great, right? Um, I want to thank Muslim Public Affairs Council I wanna thank Women in Film for this excellent panel. This is literally a dream come true. And I wanna thank the City of West Hollywood Public Affairs Council and the audience for joining us for the Black Muslim Women um, panel, which is basically uplifting Black Muslim women's stories and Black Muslim women creators. We truly can see that Black, Black Muslim women's lives matter. <laughs> and hopefully we will be the ones creating those stories, continue to create those stories and others. This has been fabulous. I, I have loved it and I just wanna share, I'm not gonna call anybody out, but one of the audience members um, sent me a private message during the conversation to just say that she and her friend were watching this. Um, her friend is um, an Afro-Latino Muslim and she's like, I can't tell you what a panel like this means to me, just seeing other black Muslim women who are creatives um, on screen talking about how they're actually doing it, they're actually making it. Um, they're not letting their art stay within themselves, but they're sharing it. It just, it meant so much to them. So I just wanna thank you for those messages that we've been receiving. I appreciate so much the time that you've shared with us. I can't, you know, thank you enough for this. Thank you to the West Hollywood Arts Commission. Thank you, thank you to Impact Hollywood Bureau and to Sue Abedi for helping us put this panel together. Although this is my first time meeting so many of you, um, you know, during the course of putting this panel together, I hope it's not the last time. Women in Film needs your energy, it needs your brilliance, it needs your creativity, your talent. All of you, please come back and share. You have so much 
um, to give to the community. And I hope the community can continue to uplift your work. So on that note, I wanna thank you for joining us for this edition of Women in Film Speaker Series. Thank you again to our panelists, to our amazing moderator, Professor Amina Bakir Abdul-Jabbar, and we will see you soon. Thank you.